first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, a President of the General Sports Authority and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa arrived in Doha today to attend the final match of the Asian qualifiers for the Paris 2024 Olympics to be held between Bahrain and National Handball Team and Japan's counterpart at Al Dohail at Qatari Club Hall. Upon His Highness's arrival in Doha, he was greeted by Sheikh Thani bin Hamad Al Thani. On this occasion, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa expressed his pride in the strong fraternal relations that bring together the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Sicily state of Qatar at various levels, including the sports field. His Highness praised the resounding success achieved by the state of Qatar in hosting the Asian qualifiers for the 2024 Paris Olympics, which enhances the successes of the state of Qatar, which has become an important centre for hosting various major sports tournaments. His Highness wished the leadership, a government and people of Qatar for their progress and prosperity. Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed bin Salman al Musalim, said that the parliamentary division of the Kingdom of Bahrain made multiple parliamentary contributions and was keen to play its active role during the 147th General Assembly meetings of the Interparliamentary Union thus consolidating its role in enhancing the discussions and dialogues taking place in regional and international forums and opening the way to highlight the progress and prosperity achieved by the Kingdom of Bahrain in various development fields. On the occasion of the conclusion of the participation of the Parliamentary Division Delegation of the Kingdom of Bahrain in the meetings of the Interparliamentary Union, the Speaker expressed pride in the development and progress which is witnessed by the parliamentary diplomacy of the Kingdom of Bahrain and this effective results achieved through building parliamentary partnerships and close relationships with the parliaments of sisterly and friendly countries. The 147th General Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union concluded yesterday with the adoption of the Luanda Declaration and the Parliamentary Action for Peace, Justice and Strong Institutions, which included a number of axes related to topics of discussion and dialogue in relation to the 16th goal of the Sustainable Development Goals. The declaration stressed the need to stop the war on Gaza and called for taking decisive measures to ensure the unhindered passage of humanitarian relief into Gaza. The Luanda Declaration stated that a goal number 16 of the Sustainable Development Goals relates more than any other to Parliament as the main institution of governance in every country. The Luanda Declaration also stressed the importance of belief in the rule of law at the national and international levels as for the basis of preventing and revolving conflicts as well as dialogue and diplomacy as the only path to lasting peace. Yesterday, the Secretary General of the Parliament Representatives Council and Secretary of the Executive Committee of the Parliamentary Division, Councillor Rashid Biajma, stressed the importance of exchanging experiences and expertise and building bridges of cooperation with administrative bodies that support the work of parliaments, especially with regard to opportunities for optimal exploration of artificial intelligence technologies in support of the work of the Legislative Authority in light of the comprehensive development progress led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. At the conclusion of his participation in the meetings of the Association of Secretaries General of the National Parliaments of the Interparliamentary Union within the work of the 147th Assembly of the Union, Banajma said that the development of international relations systems requires the participation of people's representatives as active parties through parliamentary diplomacy in order to vote the democratic dimension and based on enhancing consultation, cooperation and communication between peoples and the representatives, in addition to supporting international and regional cooperation towards achieving sustainable development goals, especially the 16th goal related to achieving peace, justice and strong institutions, which makes modernising work mechanisms in the administrative bodies that support the work of the parliamentary and keeping pace with technological development an import imperative. Also yesterday, in the closing session, the Governing Council of the Interparliamentary Union approved MP Abdul Nabi Salman 
first Deputy Speaker of the Representative Council, as a member of the Permanent Committee for International Peace and Security, representing the Arab Parliamentary Group in the Union. MP Abnul Nabi Salman expressed his pride in being elected as a member of the committee, stressing that this is considered a new achievement for Bahraini parliamentary diplomacy and reflects the success it has achieved in consolidating its effective participation in regional and international parliamentary organisations and unions. In the presence of Vice President of the National Council for Arts, Sheikh Turki bin Rashid bin Isa Al Khalifa, and Vice President of the Supreme Council for the Environment, Vice President of the Supreme Authority of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club, the Member of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club, organised the opening horse race of the new season, 2023 to 2024, which was held for the Cups of the late Sheikh Rashid bin Isa Al Khalifa at the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club racetrack in Rafa Sakir. Trophies of the Sheikh Rashid bin Isa Al Khalifa Cups were presented to the winners, with Sheikh Turkey bin Rashid bin Isa Al Khalifa presented the season opening cup for the eighth race trainer, Paul Smith, and Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid bin Isa Al Khalifa presented the seventh race cup to trainer Alan Smith. Sheikh Isa bin Rashid bin Isa Al Khalifa also presented the first race cup to trainer Mahoud Ali and the second race cup to winning owner Hussein Alafo. He also presented the fifth race cup to Sheikh Sultan bin Din bin Mohammed bin Salman Al Khalifa and Sheikh Khalid bin Turki bin Rashid Al Khalifa presented the fourth race cup to trainer Alan Smith and sixth race cup to the winning owner Hadi Alafu. Minister of Oil and Environment, a Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak bin Dana, affirmed the strength of the steadily growing fraternal Bahrain UAE relations. Dr. bin Dana was speaking during his meeting with the Chairman of the World Green Economy Organization, the WGEO, Said Mohammed Altaya, on the sidelines of the participation in the 34th meeting of the Council of Arab Ministers, responsible for the environment, held in Muscat, Oman. The minister commended the UAE's distinguished efforts to support a global endeavours aimed at achieving sustainable development goals and confronting climate challenges. The two sides discussed issues of common interest pertaining to various environment and climate fields. Minister of Youth Affairs Ram bint Najib Tafiki said that the Ministry of Youth Affairs is looking forward to opening broader and more comprehensive channels of cooperation with the United Nations in the Kingdom of Bahrain in the youth fields, thus allowing ways to introduce the distinguished Bahraini model in caring for and empowering youth and making them the basic element in the development process. During her meeting with the resident coordinator of the United Nations activities in the Kingdom of Bahrain, Khaled al Mahoud, she stressed the importance of benefiting from the expertise and cadres of the United Nations to transfer knowledge to youth of Bah the Kingdom of Bahrain in a number of areas of interest to them, including the Sustainable Development Goals. Tafiki pointed out that the ministry was set up as a monument to involve Bahraini youth in presenting ideas and projects that led to achieving international goals. During the meeting, the Minister of Youth Affairs gave an overview of the programmes and the initiatives presented by Bahrain to contribute to urging Bahraini and international youth to participate in implementing the Sustainable Development Goals, including the King Hamad Award for Empowering Youth to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals and the programmes provided by the Bahrain Scientific Centre. The Minister of Youth Affairs discussed with the UN Coordinator ways to enhance joint work between the two sides, in addition to presenting joint initiatives on the youth side, in addition to discussing a number of common topics. For his part, the UN coordinator praised the efforts made by the Ministry of Youth Affairs to align its programmes and initiatives with the goals of sustainable development, stressing the United Nations' keenness to expand the scope of cooperation with the Ministry of Youth and provide joint youth programmes in various fields.
The Secretary General of the National Initiative for the Development of the Agricultural Sector, Sheikh Amaram bin Isa Al Khalifa, revealed the launch of the first activities of the National Forestation Campaign in its third phase. The campaign Forever Green is being held under the patronage of Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, wife of His Majesty the King and President of the National Initiative for Agricultural Development, NIAD, Consultative Council. The National Afforestation Campaign aims to support the Kingdom's strategies to increase the green area, sustain the development of the agricultural sector in the Kingdom of Bahrain and highlight the aesthetic features of the Kingdom. NIAD is cooperating in this national campaign with governmental and private institutions and specialists interested in agriculture and it hopes to attract more partnerships to achieve the campaign's goals that are consistent with the 13th and 15th goals of sustainable development. In response to the Royal Directors of His Majesty the King and to provide support to the Palestinians in Gaza and as a contribution to the Bahraini National Campaign to Relieve the People in Gaza, which was organised by the Bahrain National Committee for Relief of the Palestinian People in Gaza under the patronage of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Royal Humanitarian Foundation received a financial donation from Lulu International Group worth 25,000 Bahraini dinars. Secretary General of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, Mustafa Al Sayed, valued the support of His Majesty the King, the Honorary President of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, to the Palestinian people in Gaza and provide urgent humanitarian aid. He also noted the support of the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and the leadership of Representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Asayed also praised the generous donation of the Lulu International Group as they were always partners in the Foundation's charitable and humanitarian work and continued contribution of the group to the humanitarian projects and initiatives launched by the Foundation inside and outside Bahrain. Bahrain Bourse, a licence exchange by the Central Bank of Bahrain, has won the ICT Leadership Award 2023 at the 43rd Gulf and Middle East Information Technology Exhibition and Conference, GTEC Global, that was held in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Bahrain Bourse has taken significant strides towards enhancing its business continuity and performance and reinforcing operational agility and resilience demonstrating their commitment to providing uninterrupted services to investors and maintaining competitive edge in the market. Bahrain Bourse has adopted an off-site business continuity planning BCP environment by implementing a secure managed desktop as a service DAAS solution, which offers its employees access to a secure a cloud-based virtual desktop that be accessed from anywhere at any time. This means that employees can use their work computers from anywhere in the world as long as they have an internet connection. A Palestinian data provider said internet services in the Gaza Strip have been cut off by Israeli bombardment. The Palestinian telecom provider Paltech said the bombardment caused complete disruption of the internet, cellular and landline services for more than three weeks. Gaza has faced an almost total internet blackout. The cables, cell towers and infrastructure needed to keep people online have been damaged or destroyed as Israel launched thousands of missiles. Late yesterday, amid reports of heavy bombing in Gaza, some of the last remaining connectivity had disappeared. Rescue workers have not been able to connect to mobile networks, hampering recovery efforts. And information flowing out of Gaza showing the conditions on the ground have been stemmed. Secretary General of the Arab League Ahmed Abulgaid welcomed the United Nations General Assembly's adoption of a resolution calling for a humanitarian truce in Gaza with a majority of 120 votes. Abulgate stressed that this vote reflects the true international will to reject the continuation of the bloodshed that has led to an ongoing humanitarian catastrophe and the clear targeting of civilians in Gaza. The UNGA adopted the Arab resolution after a total of 120 countries voted in favour of the decision, 
while only 14 countries voted against it and 45 other countries abstained. It marks the first formal response of the United Nations to the escalation of violence in Israel and Palestine since the attacks of the 7th of October in Israel. The Secretary General stressed the necessity of translating this resolution into a diplomatic campaign to pressure Israel to stop its war in Gaza and to obtain guarantees of opening up humanitarian corridors, which could help bring in the necessary aid into Gaza. Abu Ghith also welcomed the announcement issued by the European Union to work on opening humanitarian corridors in Gaza and send aid to the population there, as well as Spain's initiative to host an international conference aimed at finding a political settlement to the conflict on the basis of a two-state solution. White House National Security Council spokesman John Kirby said Washington supports the truce with the aim of delivering aid, including fuel and electricity, stressing its necessity for medical care and water purification, as well as to allow the departure of people in humanitarian cases. Kirby also expressed that the United States supports the idea of a localised and temporary cessation of hostilities if it is necessary to secure the release of hostages from Gaza. Kirby's statements came after European Union leaders at the meeting in Brussels called for a humanitarian truce and the opening of safe corridors for movement and aid delivery to Gaza's population. He said the United States continued to discuss with Israel about the aims of its operation and the need to protect civilians in Gaza. The Council of the European Union has accepted the Spanish proposal to hold a peace conference in about six months on the conflict between Israel and Hamas. In a meeting of the bloc's 27 governments, Spain had proposed to the EU to demand an immediate ceasefire, but the language was opposed by some countries. Observers and analysts believe that the European move comes at a very crucial time with the intensification of the conflict in the region and the possibility of its expansion given the current regional threats. At the same time, they indicated the need to hold the conference urgently and not within six months, as was announced. Morocco's Beit Malakhoud Agency distributed vital humanitarian aid to Palestinians in Jerusalem at the Red Crescent Hospital in the city. The agency said in a statement that they distributed substantial amounts of food aid as well as medical equipment for the benefit of health facilities in the city. Two Moroccan military planes also landed at El Arish Airport in Egypt on Wednesday, carrying vital humanitarian aid for Palestine, which was handed to the Egyptian Red Crescent, to be distributed in Gaza. Since October the 7th, Israel has been conducting intensified operations in the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. So far, the attacks have killed over 7,000 Palestinians, including nearly 3,000 children. Omani voters residing within the Sultanate are poised to exercise their voting rights on Sunday, selecting their representatives for the Shura Council's 10th term. This crucial process is made seamless through the Intercab application available from 8am to 7pm. The final vote, voter list for the 10th term of the Shura Council reveal an impressive count of 753,690 registered male and female voters, all utilising the Intercab application and the dedicated elections website. Notably, 13,843 voters have cast the ballots from locations outside the Sultanate of Oman. A total of 843 candidates, including 32 women, are in the fray for the 10th term of the Shura Council, aligning with the future plans, visions and directions of the Sultanate. This term holds a national significance as it will further activate and implement the goals of Oman Vision 2040 across economic, investment and developmental spheres.